Hey everyone, Jeff here. So last year I did a live stream uh, when Twin Motion came out with their latest update, which was 2023. And with that, they added a technology called Path Tracer. I was super excited about it because it actually brought ray tracing into the Twin Motion environment. Well, recently, Twin Motion released a preview of uh, what's to come in Twin Motion 2023.2. We finally, finally get a technology that existed in Unreal Engine, and it's called Lumen. For those of you that don't know what Lumen is, it is a global illumination and reflection engine that exists within a real-time environment. Obviously, it's created for Unreal, so it's for video games, but we finally get it into Twin Motion, and this is a game changer. So Path Tracer was great. It gave us a more realistic rendered look when it came to producing our images and our videos from Twin Motion. So with this release of Lumen finally being ported over to Twin Motion, we're getting to the point where our real-time views, that means our interactive views, our build modes, not our baked renders and our baked videos are becoming much more hyper-realistic. And so I'm super excited about it. And I wanna just show you this Lumen technology and you can see for yourself why I'm so excited about it. So first I'm just gonna show you an example of an exterior scene and then we'll do an interior scene so I can show you kind of the before and after of what Lumen does. So this right here, this is our default 3D um, view of a scene, right? Which it doesn't look bad, right? I mean, it, it, this is totally passable <laughs> um, for, for a rendered scene. But if you start looking closely, you can see it's kind of a little gamey looking, right? It's it's lacking some definition. It's lack, lacking some, some shadows, some ambient shadows. It's lacking some reflections, right? If you start looking at the glass, um, it's not really reflecting much at all. Um, as far as the sort of environment and it just doesn't it just doesn't really have much depth to it Okay, so If you remember in my previous video when I talked about path tracer I'm just gonna go up here and I'm gonna hit ambiance and I'm gonna hit properties Move this over for you guys. so You can see it. Okay, so path tracer was introduced uh, in 2023 and this was awesome because it actually added rendering to twin motion so instead of seeing what you have in the screen here if i hit path tracer what you'll see is it actually is going to start rendering it out right and it looks good right but the problem is it it needs to render as it's moving along so as a real-time view you know you can see here i'll go 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 and it'll 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 refresh right and and it looks good and 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 and, and don't get me wrong this is this is an excellent way to produce images and videos, um, but there's some there's some lacking um, interactivity with it, right? Notice how the, the birds stop, the people stop moving, the animation stop. This is really baking and rendering your scene, and obviously as I'm moving around, it's a little distracting. So if you were presenting to a client or something, and you presented a live model as opposed to a rendering, then obviously Path Tracer isn't gonna work. So then we were kind of stuck with real time, which for most, you know, in, in most cases, this is this does look really good, right? This scene obviously has a lot of detail and great materials, but until I turn Lumen on, <laughs> uh, you're gonna think that this is great, right? But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn Lumen on and you'll notice immediately what happened. A couple things, right? First thing you notice is the reflections, all right? So I'm gonna turn on, off and on again, right? So here's, here's Lumen off and here's Lumen on. So look at those windows right in the middle here you notice how it's actually real world reflections now, not sort of this, this sky reflection or this global, global reflection, right? Then you start noticing the shadows. I'll turn it off and on again. Notice how the shadows of the trees in the background, the shadows of the, of the vegetation in the foreground, the ambient shadows underneath this deck here. I'll turn it off and on again. I'm going to keep turning it off and on so you guys can see. So look at things like the, the shadows under here. Right. So now and notice I'm, I'm spinning around in that 3D view and there's no fireflies. There's none of that painting. Right. So now we're getting to the point where we actually have a real time view that is getting closer and closer to our path traced views, which is pretty awesome. Right. The fact that now instead of using path tracer and rendering this out, we're actually getting this real realistic shadows and reflections within our real time views. The other great thing to think about when it comes to Lumen over Path Tracer is if you're on a time crunch, Path Tracer does require quite a bit of resources. It also can take quite a while to export. Okay, if you're doing an 8K rendering with Path Tracer, even on like a 4090, um, it still may take 10 to 15 minutes to render. If you're doing a video, it might take hours to render. In Lumen, a 15 minute Path Tracer export or rendering uh, may actually only take less than a minute. 
because it's really just a screenshot with higher fidelity of your image. So that was an example of an exterior. I want to show you an interior example, and then I'm going to give you a couple tips on some of the settings that I realized will make things look a little better for you. OK, so let's jump right into this interior scene. So you can see here we have this interior scene. It's an office space. This is basically your default twin motion. OK, so this is what you guys are used to seeing. And again, it's respectable. There's some reflection. There's some some shadow, but not too much shadow. And, and especially with interior scenes, um, until this lumen introduction, or if you're using Path Tracer, um, if you're not using Path Tracer, you had to do a lot of crazy things to make shadows and reflections look good to the point where literally people used to put in fake shadows and twin motion to make interior scenes look better. So first and foremost, what does this look like in Path Tracer? So if I turn on Path Tracer, you'll see we get our fireflies. It's going, 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 and then it's going to render it through. OK, obviously this looks great, right? But notice the people stopped walking and it's not interactive anymore, right? Path Tracer requires a, a frozen moment in time. So if I move around, you'll see those fireflies are going to come back up and we're going to have to wait, 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 and all this good stuff, right? Not ideal, OK? So if you want interaction, whether it's through VR, whether it's through live model demonstrations like I'm doing here, but you want the same realism of Path Tracer, that's where this Lumen thing comes into play. So I'm going to flip on Lumen now. Give it a second to load, and now you'll see. Check that out, right? So now this is our real-time scene. OK, I'm just going to go around. I'm going to turn it on and off in some, some different areas so you can kind of see and get a sense of what's going on. So notice this, this glass over here. Let's look at the reflections over here, some of the lighting and shadows. I'm going to flip it off again, right? There's the glass, right? And I'm going to flip it on. So hopefully you guys can see the difference there, how incredible that looks. Right, compared to uh, what we were dealing with before. So now in real-time views, we have all this great shadows and reflections. So for VR or for live models, um, you can see it's running pretty good. The other great thing about this, again, is the speed of the export is incredible. I made a video of this exact office, and it took less than two minutes to render out four different videos. Um, and it was a total of almost a minute and a half. And that's pretty impressive when you think about it. OK, so a couple settings just to think about as, I, as I'm sitting here. So. All of the stuff I normally say about twin motion apply. Okay, so if you haven't seen any of the my previous twin motion videos, I'll link them below. Um, I have all my lighting settings and so on and so forth. What you're going to want for sure is you're going to want to turn on HDRI environment. So if I scroll down here under ambiance, notice I'm using um, uh, Cloudy 32 as my HDRI. I have a sky dome on. It's enabled. Okay, anything in twin motion, whether you're using Lumen, whether you're using the um, standard or you're using path tracer, you need to use HDRI environments. I promise you it's going to it's going to change everything for you. And notice all these settings are on uh, HDR FX lighting, all that good stuff. OK, everything else is pretty much baked. The one thing that I want to show you guys, which makes a huge difference, is under exposure. You notice auto exposure is on, which I suggest using um, for sure. In most scenes, you're almost always going to want to do it. But you need to turn on local exposure. By default, it's off, OK? And so you'll notice, if I go in here, it's got a little bit of a different feel. It's darker. The lighting's not as nice, right? But if I turn on auto exposure, what it lets me do is it lets me play with the highlights and the shadow re reduction and improvements, see? So for some reason, this got hidden and it got turned off by default. And so one thing that I really want to show you guys, especially when it comes to, to Lumen, but definitely with Path Tracer too, is to make sure you look at your local exposure. So that's again, that's under environment, under ambiance and exposure. You want to expand local exposure, turn that on, and then you can play with those really, really dark darks that for some reason are always plaguing the global illumination when it comes to when it comes to twin motion. OK, everything else is pretty much baked in exactly how um, I would I would set it up before um, sh you do. Are, you are dealing with shadow and shadow bias for anyone who's dealt with twin motion. You want to make sure that your shadow, the distance of your shadow is at least as long as the furthest item in your scene. So if I have trees that are in my background that are twelve hundred feet away, then that's what it's going to want to be. Um, and then the bias, you want it to be as low as possible without it looking kind of funny. And so that's kind of you can play with that. Notice I have everything cranked up as far as as far as detail, as far as quality, and so on and so forth. Um, didn't really change anything there. And then under effects, I have my typical settings, which is usually a higher contrast, lower saturation. And then I do have a line light filter. Um, and that is kind of more of a 
subjective thing than uh, <laughs> than anything else. And so so what you'll notice again is how how dramatic that that difference is. And actually, you know, let's let's do one more on and off with this, some sunlight so you guys can see. So if I go to render, I'm going to flip between standard. So now you can see again, notice on the corner here, notice some of these reflections, notice some of the uh, the sunlight coming through. If I flip on lumen, what a difference that makes. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> I needed to make a video of this because I was super excited when it when when I saw that it was finally released. We've been waiting for it. Lumen's been in Unreal for quite some time. We finally get it in Twin Motion. So definitely head on over to uh, the link below and install your free trial of Twin Motion. Uh, I promise you, this is going to be a lot of fun. You're going to have a great time with it. Make sure you comment below. Let me know what you think of this and uh, subscribe to the channel here. And I'll see you guys soon.